Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the missing side of a triangle using our inverse, or I'm sorry, using trigonometric functions. So basically to kind of remind you, you know, previously when we needed to find a missing side of a triangle, um, we usually had two triangle, two sides of the uh, two sides of the triangle. Now again, if you notice these are all right triangles, all right? So that's all of our focus is, is on right triangles. But if we had something like this, we notice that, oh, well, um, if I have two sides and I need to find the third side, I can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, or you could notice that this is a Pythagorean triple, so therefore x has to equal 5. However, if you look at these triangles that we have, they are right triangles, um, but I only have one length. Now, to keep this kind of simple, I just use the one missing length of 6. And I just use the one angle of 30 degrees because, again, this is an introduction video. I actually show multiple examples where I move the angle, I move you know, and I moved and I changed the value of the angle and so forth. So um, this is just our basic introduction. Now, to use our inverse function, the main important thing though is we need to identify what sides are, um, what sides do we have. So the best thing that I like to do that I tell my students is to first always identify the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always directly across. Now again, remember this is kind of an introduction video, so the hypotenuse is in the same position for all, each and every one of my problems. All right? And, but that's going to be helpful because once we know where the hypotenuse is, we know that it's always directly across from our 90 degree angle. And the side that is between our angle and our 90 degree angle is our adjacent. And again, in another video, I change this all around. Um, the side length that is opposite of our angle is called our opposite side. Now, the reason why I'm spending the time labeling all of this information is because to uh, use our trigonometric uh, functions, we need to know what is our opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse to identify which trigonometric function we can use. Because if we're given, for instance, the opposite and the adjacent, I have to use tangent. I can't use sine or cosine. So if you look in here, if you look at this example, we're given the angle, right? So from this angle, I have labeled my adjacent, my opposite, and my hypotenuse. Now again, this is all the same, but that will change. So you know, watch my you know, further video as far as doing this where I, I do multiple different examples. But for on here, you can see that we have the adjacent side and we have the opposite side. So going through our trigonometric functions, I'm not going to write them all out, but I will write SOHCAHTOA out so we can remember which trigonometric is which. So for this one, I need to do opposite over adjacent. Well, that's going to be tangent is opposite over adjacent. So now I'm just going to say tangent of an angle theta, because tangent is always of an angle theta, is your opposite over your adjacent. And that is our definition of tangent. Tangent function, well, now I know the opposite is x, adjacent is 6, and my theta, which is my angle, is 30 degrees. So I'll just enter in that information, x over 6. Now I basically need to solve for 6. So basically just using inverse operations, we see that my variable x is being divided by 6. So to undo division, I'm going to multiply by 6. And then I'm just going to rewrite these so the x is on the left-hand side. 6 divided by 6 is just 1. So I'm left with x equals 6 times the tangent of 30 degrees. Now, notice our angle is in degrees. So when we're evaluating using a um, scientific or graphing calculator, you want to make sure that your mode in your calculator is also in degrees. If you are doing angles in radians, then you change it over to radians. So all I'm simply going to do is do 6 times the tangent of 30 degrees. And when I do that, I get approximately 3.46. I'm just going to round to the uh, hundredth decimal. So I'll have x is approximately, because I'm rounding, 3.46. So therefore, that opposite side is approximately 3.46. Okay. Now let's go and look at the next example. In this next example, um, basically what we have is we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So I look at my six trigonometric function. I see which one is going to deal with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And you can see that's cosine. So cosine of an angle theta is equal to your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So now, again, to kind of follow, oops, let me write that out, actually. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have cosine of 30 degrees is equal to my adjacent, which is my 6, over my hypotenuse. Now we have to solve for x, but the problem is x is in the denominator. So just like I got the 6 off the denominator here, I'm going to multiply by an x on both sides. 
Now those x's divide to 1. And I'm left with x times cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 6. Well, again, to solve for x, I see my x is being multiplied by cosine of 30 degrees. So I'm going to divide by 30 degrees on both sides. Those divide out, and I'm left with x equals 6 divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. Now again, just like we did in the last problem, I want to make sure my calculator is in degree mode. And I'm simply just going to type in 6 divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. And in this example, I get 6.928. And again, I'm just going to approximate. So I'm going to round to x equals 6.928. So therefore, I'm going to round to the third. So I can say x is approximately 6.93. OK. Now, a lot of students you know, have trouble doing it like this, which is OK. You know, I mean, it's, it, once you get used to it, it's not too bad. And you just got to do some examples. But there's also sometimes an easier way, and that's looking at the um, inverse function. So in this example, you can see that I have um, the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be sine. So I could say the sine of my angle theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, if I was going to plug in everything else again, again, I would have an x in the denominator, right? So I'd say sine of 30 degrees is equal to 6 over x. Now, if you're having trouble sine and you didn't really understand what I did there, you can also think about the reciprocal. So if sine is opposite of hypotenuse, remember the reciprocal identity is cosecant of theta, which is hypotenuse over opposite. And some people like using the reciprocal identities a little bit better. Um, remember, they're just reciprocals of each other, right? So what that means is cosecant of theta is just equal to 1 over sine of theta. So what I'm going to do is I can replace this with 1 over sine theta equals hypotenuse, which is x, over my opposite, which is 6. And then what you could do is basically kind of do, again, a cross multiplication and solve for x. Um, you could use, I'm sorry, not cross multiplication, just use the cross product. But what you'd have is x times sine of theta equals 6 times 1, which is 6. And then you just divide by sine, oops, that's 30 degrees. So you just divide by sine of 30 degrees. And you get x equals 6 over sine of 30 degrees. If you notice, it's the exact same thinking, um, <laughs> the exact same really process, but it's just a different way of basically um, completing the problem. And even if you left it as you know, um, cosine, uh, oh, I'm sorry, cosecant of 30 degrees equals x over 6. That means 6 times cosecant of 30 degrees equals x. Just remember that cosecant is 1 over sine, though. So 6 times 1 over the sine of 30 degrees equals x. So therefore, that's 6 over the sine of 30 degrees equals x. That's another way you could also kind of think of that. But again, either way, you can see that my trigonometric function is going to be in the denominator. So therefore, basically what I do to find this, I'm going to do 6 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And in this case, I get 12. So x is going to be 12 in this case. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we use our trigonometric functions to find the missing side of a triangle. Thanks.